so excited last night. I hardly sleep. The excitement built as the moment of totality crept closer. Here we go. Claps, cheers, here it comes. And there it goes. We are in totality. A moment that changed daylight to twilight. And the crickets, they're singing their chorus again. They believe that it, it is nighttime. A night that lasted just a few minutes, but made a memory that will last forever. Those are sites many of us will never forget. Solar Eclipse 2017. Good evening, I'm Steve Savard. And I'm Courtney Bryant. News 4 crews are across the area tonight covering this historic event. Emily Pritchard is in South St. Louis County at Jefferson Barracks. We'll also go to Venton and Blandon in St. Genevieve. But let's start with News 4's Russell Kinsall right now in Washington, Missouri. Well, we found people, eclipse chasers here in Washington who are from Spain, Germany, Italy, also from South America, China, Japan, Australia, and across the United States. And many of them brought their children for an experience that they will never forget. The Knickerbocker family traveled from New Hampshire to Missouri to experience the eclipse. We're really excited to see something unique and special that we may not be able to see again in our lifetime. They brought their glasses, but no cameras. The family didn't want to be distracted by taking pictures. They came here to soak up the total experience of a total eclipse. We could only see like 60% of it where we were, so um, I'm excited that we came all this way. As the moon obscured more of the sun, it created half-moon shapes through the trees. And then it was a total eclipse. It does look like a dragon. I liked it. It was really cool for my first solar eclipse. Darkness descended on Washington at 1.15 and lasted two and a half minutes. It went by super fast, but it was super cool. Totality created enough darkness that a chorus of crickets and cicadas started singing their nighttime songs. That was amazing. It was really, really amazing. It was really great. Didn't think it would be so dark, so completely uh, covered. The expressions of amazement and wonder swept across the crowd as completely as the darkness fell across the land. It was an experience the Knickerbockers will never forget. It was really cool because one minute you, it's like there's just a sliver and then like 30 seconds later it's completely dark, the bugs come out and you take off your glasses and it's beautiful. It was beautiful. More than 5,000 came here. Only 20 were overcome by the heat, had to be checked out. Once they cooled off, they were okay. I'm told all 20 were from cooler northern states. Now, Emily Pritchard is live at Jefferson Barracks Park, a popular place today for watching the eclipse. That's right, Russell. We had a lot of people out here, and I would recommend if you ever get the chance to see a total solar eclipse in person to do it. It was a pretty cool experience for me personally, and I would guess the eight to 10,000 people that were out here at the park with me this afternoon would probably agree. Many adults told me that this experience actually beat out all of the hype, but what did the kids think about it? I asked them, and here are some of their answers. A loop across the sun. It looked like the moon turning the sun into a moon, and at the end, uh, a brighter moon. It was just beautiful. It was like the, the sun and the moon just put together. It was amazing. Tell me what you saw today. That's a okay. full moon. A full moon? What did it look like? Space. I just love that description. It looked like space because, well, it really was, and it did. Another girl I talked with out here called that partial eclipse that we saw earlier in the day. She referred to it as basically a nursery room moon, which is pretty accurate as well. And the only complaint I heard from people out here, the heat and humidity, which we couldn't beat out, but a lot of people didn't think about it after they got to witness totality. Reporting live in Jefferson Barracks, Emily Pritchard, News 4. Yeah. Emily, as you mentioned, the weather became an issue for some earlier today because of clouds. Yeah, they were hiding the eclipse in some parts of the area. Right now, we're watching some pop-up storms. Steve? Yeah, we are. A few of those pop-up storms uh, redeveloping, actually. So we had some. They have uh, fizzled out. And now we're dealing with 
uh, storms that are popping up yet again just to the southeast. One is right in between Smithton and uh, Columbia, Illinois, right here. And that storm is not severe. None of these are severe right now, but there's some downpours. So more of this is what you can anticipate for the next few hours. Isolated, not everyone gets hit. But if you're going to be out and about, maybe you have a softball game this evening, just be prepared. Quick downpour. And then after about 9 to 10 o'clock, this line is going to come our way. In fact, let me time it out for you. There's two strong storm cells within that line. One would be in Bowling Green in about two hours. Hours. The other, three and a half hours into Troy, kind of just northwest and north of Wentzville and O'Fallon. So it gives you an idea. We're talking about 9.30 to 10 o'clock coming out on the northwest side of the St. Louis metro. And there's more. If you look at the front back off to the northwest, that's what will hit us overnight into tomorrow morning. I'm going to time that out for you coming up with Super Predictor. But uh, I think for the most part, we got away with a pretty good one today with a lot of people enjoying the eclipse rain-free for the most part. Yeah, you saw it firsthand. You experienced totality yeah. yourself today in Festus. It was really a very cool experience. So what we did is we went up to people in Festus and talked to them before the eclipse because there was all this buildup and this energy leading to the eclipse. Then we asked afterwards about their expectations mm -hmm. before and after and see if those expectations were met. They were clearly bursting with excitement. I'm really excited to see everybody's reactions. I, of course, heard that, you know, we aren't going to be able to help ourselves, but to ooh and on. Ah, I just can't wait to see everybody else get so excited about this just amazing once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Paul. As you keep looking, yeah. you'll start to see the sunspots. This is going to be a mind blow because uh, you're going to see that corona, number one. Uh, what I'm looking for is that sunset effect. It's just a great chance to spend the day together and see something that uh, I remember seeing as a little, little kid. Not a full eclipse, but a partial eclipse. So hoping that the clouds stay away. What do you expect to see today? The eclipse. Is the eclipse going to be awesome? Yes. What's going to be the most memorable moment, you think? Seeing the sun go, see the moon going in front of the sun. Here we go. Claps, cheers, here it comes. And there it goes. They tell you it's a life-changing experience, and it really, really is. To be able to, to see the corona, to see the chromosphere, this is something that I will be dreaming about and thinking about for the rest of my life. Are you speechless? I thought it was cool. I think it's just um, something everyone can agree on. There's no agenda. It's just really fun. And it's uh, it's something we'll you know we haven't done for years and we won't do again for years. So it's something we'll we'll look back on for decades and decades. Well, great visuals. Carbondale became a hotspot for scientists from all around the world, but those researchers were just a fraction of the 14,000 guests inside Saluki Stadium at Southern Illinois University. Not only was Carbondale in the path of totality, but the city is in line for yet another total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024. Scientists tell us they hope to learn even more by observing multiple eclipses from the same location. Today's total solar eclipse was a delight for most Missourians, but it was especially satisfying for some with a keen eye in St. Genevieve. News 4's Vinton Blandon talked with amateur astronomers there today. Vinny, I'm guessing the 2 minute 38 second event did not disappoint. It did not, Courtney. And you know, I never really can guarantee what anyone thinks, but I'm willing to bet at least part of my next paycheck that the folks who have invested a lot of time into science and a lot of their money into getting their own telescope to see something like this is exactly what they had hoped for. If it's one thing amateur astronomers know, us laymen don't, it's the sky. You have no idea how it is to look it through a telescope. It's so gorgeous. August 21, 2017, otherwise known as Total Solar Eclipse Day, is like a scientist's Super Bowl. I've read about it, right, and people say, you know, the shadows are all strange and all animals act crazy and, you know, who knows what else. But it gets cold and there's a wind. Some eclipse watchers in St. Genevieve don't recall the cold or wind but felt something unfamiliar. Today. Man, that is so cool. Okay, George, you'll see all the sunspots change. The woman surprised by her own excitement was eager to share the experience with her husband. Eight-year-old Elena DeBrosia was in the sharing mood, too. My dad said the last time that there was an eclipse was when he was, like, younger than Nathan. Nathan, her younger brother, wore his glasses but didn't care as much. For those who missed the total solar eclipse, you'll have to ask someone who was a part of the big day. It's like someone took a big bite out of a cookie. It looks like, you know, when you look at the telescope, it's like it's got a bite out of it. The moon coming in. 
Some of the words to describe the eclipse was amazing, phenomenal, just totally spectacular. I kept hearing that all day today. That's the latest here in St. Genevieve, Vincent Bland, News 4. No doubt a unique event. Some watched the eclipse in a very unique way on the water. A group floated the Mississippi watching that show of science. News 4's Marielle Mose takes us along on the riverboat ride. In All aboard for a float into the path of totality. Enjoy. All 165 passengers. Well, hello. Given eclipse glasses as they boarded Tom Sawyer for a six hour cruise down the Mississippi River and back to St. Louis. We should be in a prime spot for everybody to see the uh, eclipse happen. Captain Jim Doyle is driving the boat cruise to a spot between Kimswick and Herculaneum to see the longest totality possible from the river of two minutes and 15 seconds. Right now the traffic hasn't been bad on the river here so we're making good time. The southbound trip to totality was full of excitement. See the reaction of other people around me and kiss my wife. Get an eclipse kiss. And celebration. Today I'm 63. Happy birthday. Passengers packed the top deck moments before totality. Eyes to the sky. Not quite, almost, almost, here it comes. And then that moon curtain closed. Oh, right now. Yeah. Really, really, really cool. Well, there was once light in their lives. Up there is Venus. Now, there's only love in the dark. And for Mark Stacy, celebrating 63 years. This is really fantastic. His birthday wish for more years to see this again. 63 more. Then the moon moved on and the light crept back. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. As the boat crews turned around towards St. Louis. <laughs> on the Mississippi River. Do it again. <laughs> Can we see it again? Mary Elmo's News 4. Still ahead on News 4 at 6, a big debut at the Anheuser-Busch Beer Garden. How uh, the brewery got in on the eclipse festivities. Plus, it was an amazing view from the ground and, as Mariel showed us, from the water. But what about thousands of feet in the air? The heights. Some went to see totality. Morning news is different than any other part of the day because a lot is changing. It's the weather. It's the traffic. Tell people start.